fractions can be, you can recognize a fraction, it's something that has a numerator and a denominator and the condition is what may my input not be, my, my input may never make my denominator equal to zero and to indicate it we use this equal sign the denominator equals zero, no no it may not and therefore we have this line through it that means not equal to zero so let's look at an example so I might have something like um, I have one over x b my denominator is what x may not equal zero so here I already have it quite quite uh, very or I could easily get it um, my denominator may just not be equal to zero. Let's look at another example. If I have two over x plus or my x minus seven, okay. Remember my denominator. I'm all the while trying to limit my uh, input. I'm trying to get my domain. My denominator is what? Well, everything in the bottom is x minus seven. X minus seven may not equal zero. And now it's a normal equation, it's just, it doesn't have an equation sign, it's got a not equation sign, a not equal sign. So if I add a 7 on both sides to solve it, I see that x may not be 7, 0 plus 7. x may not be 7. And it makes sense, because if I look at that, if, I, if x is 7, I have 7 minus 7, which is 0. I may not have my denominator equal to 0. One more example for fractions. Okay, we have negative 3 over x plus 2 minus 1. That is my function. In other words, that's some fx. Let's put that here. Okay, fx. Okay, is that. Okay, now to work out my domain, I know, well, x plus 2, that's my denominator, nothing else, may not equal 0. I may not divide with 0. And when I have that, I can now solve for x. I just want to limit x, my input. So I subtract 2 on both sides. I get x is not equal to negative 2. x may not be equal to negative 2, and you can see why. Negative 2 plus 2 will give me 0. Therefore, x may not be equal to negative 2. How do I write it? Okay, if they now ask me to write my domain, how can I, can I write it? Well, there's actually three ways in which we can write it. The first way is we can say, well, um, we know that x may be any real number. x is allowed to be any other number, but x may not equal the number negative 2. That's one way of writing it. x can be any real number. This e just means it's an element of it's an element of all of the numbers, it's one of the numbers in all of the numbers but x may not be equal to 2. Another way of writing it is in set notation. So x is an element and now we're going to describe a group of numbers and to describe a group of numbers we use curly brackets. The initial group, the, let's say the initial thing is we we describe the whole of a group like for example, I would describe people in South Africa as um, South Africans, the, the biggest majority. So we would say x is an element of real numbers. That's the most important thing. So x can be any real number. Maybe x was limited. It may only have been integers. You won't necessarily find a, a problem like that. But uh, um, x is, first of all, any real number. Then we use a, a line going straight down. That just means conditions are going to follow. So whatever we write on the other side of this is the conditions that are going to follow. And the condition is that x may not equal negative 2. And there's no other condition. If there was another condition, we would have put a, a semicolon and then write the other condition. In this case, there is no such other um, condition. So we can just close this and say, well, that's, that's all of it. Okay, so let me give another example. Let's say your your parents, you're a girl, and your parents give you conditions on your boyfriend. Um, your boyfriend. Okay. First of all, they give you the condition that 
he must be in school. Okay, that's the biggest condition. Okay, let's call it B, must be an element of school. He must be in school. Okay, that's the big condition. Then they give a few other conditions. Okay, they say, well, um, B may not have tattoos. Okay, they don't allow you to date someone with tattoos. Okay, they go on and they give you another condition. They want him to do well at maths. So B um, must be greater or equal to 80% in maths. I'm not going to write it all, but there's two conditions. They say these are the two conditions that your boyfriend must, or maybe girlfriend, um, must adhere to. So first of all, the big condition is he must be someone in school. Then even if he is in school, these are going to be extra conditions. Both of those conditions must also be true. That's, that's one way of maybe writing it in a real life situation, even though I doubt your parents have something like that on your wall. But, uh, well, maybe you understand a little bit better now. The next way in which we can express it, another way of writing it, uh, or in reading it, is using bracket notation. So, uh, what I mean by that is, x is an element of all of the numbers from negative infinity, okay, up to the number negative 2. So, if I look at a number line, for x, there's the number negative 2. x can be all of these numbers. From here on, x can be all of those numbers up to infinity, but it may not be equal to 2. Now, I can never be equal to infinity, that's why I use a round bracket. If I could be equal to 2, I would have used a square bracket, but I can't. Okay. Um, I may not be equal to negative 2 okay. and x may also be any number that's bigger than that okay, so x may also be any number bigger than negative 2 it just may not be negative 2 so in other words I want to unite this line with that line I want to unite it but I can't write it in one bracket so I write unite okay, and then from negative 2 up to infinity. Okay, that is one way or one other way. This unite can also mean or. Okay, x is this kind of means less than negative two, or x is greater than negative two.